Welcome back, family, to another episode of the Back Issue Book Club. My name's Greg, and that's Rich. Hey! And this week we read... It was a it was a personal choice for this week because you know we want to we want to read some stuff we want to read too. Yes. Uh, Heir to the Empire, Timothy Zahn's the- adaptation into, into the six part series, which came out by Dark Horse Comics. I believe that was ninety five. Somewhere. Yeah. Around. yeah? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Good thing I actually have a copy on the wall right. behind me, so I just turned around <laughs> and looked at it. And I had to focus because, of course, it's a CPCS label, which is a little harder to read. It yeah, is ex- exactly. Even for me, no, seriously, it is. Um. Yeah, so this, I think we wanted to read this because it ties into, potentially ties into a lot of what's happening in the, do we have like a, like a fancy Filoni- acronym? Filoniverse. Fil- <laughs> Filoniverse. <laughs> Filoniverse, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say the, um, not only did, I, I'm glad that we read this because we know that we're getting thrown in Ahsoka. Yeah. Uh, this, which is coming out in August because they actually showed the trailer and it shows Thrawn in it. She's met, talked about him in uh, The Mandalorian. And uh, we also got that uh, the confirmation that Lars Mikkelsen is reprising his role not only as a voice but now as the live-action body of Grand Admiral Thrawn. So, yes. Those of you who don't know, that's the actor that did the voice at work for uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn in Re- Star Wars Rebels. I do hope they give him a wig, though. His hairline's a little far back for, <laughs> for Mr. Well, Thrawn. I, I'm hoping they give him good red contact lenses. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is the very first comic uh, where Grand Admiral Thrawn makes his debut. Mm-hmm. And it happens very fast in the first oh, issue. Yeah. Like, second page, I think. Or maybe even the first page. Um, and I... And, I noticed you mentioned as soon as we were looking at it for the first time, you were like, oh, I didn't think TIE Fighters could uh, go uh, light speed. Yes. Did you ever figure that out? There are some uh, TIE Fighters that do have uh, hyperspace capability. I almost said warp speed, at which point all the Star Trek fans be like, no, sacrilege. <laughs> uh, they do, uh, the, the TIE Interceptor, was the Interceptor program is the one that Thrawn was pushing to get done on... Um, it wasn't no, it wasn't the interceptor. It was the three winged one. But anyway, the, the general Tie oh. fighters don't have um, hyperspace capability. The uh, interceptors do have hyperspace capability. I don't think that they have shields. Um, there's different levels of it. You think that, you know, our things, our ships keep getting shot down. Maybe we should, we should put shields on our ships like they have on theirs. <laughs> That's true. I think SU would have a. It's kind of like um, the stormtroopers can't f- fire very aim very well, so you, you you kind of don't have a story, I guess. I'm I'm actually thinking of like another robot chicken skit that can be made out of this, you know, like Emperor Palpatine. You know, don't you think we should put shields on the Tie Fighters? No, no. Next thing you know, they'll be asking for the handrails to make sure they don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That sounds like something from that. I am on a budget here. <laughs> uh, all right, so. I, I, want to, I want to talk first about the character of Thrawn because I kind of did this in reverse. Most okay. people read Heir to the Empire and then saw, you know, Thrawn on the screen in Rebels. I'm completely opposite. I've watched Rebels multiple times and uh, just now read the uh, Heir to the Empire, which I don't know if the uh, comic book adaptation is as detailed and thorough as the three books that were uh, written by Timothy Zahn. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to assume that they were pretty close, that they allowed a lot of the artwork to take uh, precedent over the text. But I'm sure there were things that, that they skipped. Let me read a line, just a line, not a whole page or anything, okay. of uh, something that I loved. You're... you're I had no, I had no uh, connection with, or I didn't know who Grand Admiral Thrawn was before Rebels, before mm-hmm. like you brought him up and brought Rebels up and had me watch it and stuff. So, um, but I, I, I'm starting to like really like his character. It's Appreciate different. Appreciate it, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's it's weird to like be like a fan of an Empire, you know, character. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's because of stuff like this where you get like a sense of his demeanor very early on when he's talking to his like 
com- uh, captain or whatever. Captain Pelion? Yes. Yeah, he's was, like... Yeah, he's uh, actually in... He's one of the hologram characters in the latest episode of The Mandalorian. Oh, that was him? Off- yes. He's uh-huh. the one... That's Captain Pelion. They, they call him Captain Pelion. Uh, when Grand Admiral Thrawn returns, so... <laughs> Dude. Wow, okay. All right, so he's... there. You know, there. there's a skirmish happening... Uh, very early on in the in space, um, and he's talking to him, and he's like, "Captain, learn about art. When you understand the species' art, you understand the species." Yep. And I was like, "Oh, that's so cool!" <laughs> right. And then, and in Rebels, when he's talking to, I think the guy's name was Commander Flavin, and he says, "Do you study art?" And I, yeah, that made an impression on me. But after when I read this, I'm like. Oh God! If I had read this first, I would have screamed when I heard him say that <laughs> in Rebels. <laughs> yeah, but it it did happen sort of in reverse for us because when I yeah. read that, I was like, "Oh yeah, he he loved art in the show, and you know he had the, uh, Calicori. the, the Twilight, yeah, the yeah." So <laughs> it's a really cool um, facet for a bad guy, you know? Yeah. To yeah to study. There, you know, art is like an expression of people's emotions, their beliefs, and everything else. And if you can really understand that, then from a species, you can understand them. Yeah. And yeah, he, he it, I, I don't think it was in this battle, but in another battle, he was referencing. Uh, no, their artwork suggests that they are, uh, they do stuff for like this amount of time, and then they're they're uh, sluggish for. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this is the right time. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. They feast like for a month and then they take a break or something like that. And yeah, this is when they take a break. So we should attack them now. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's awesome. It's brilliant. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that if Thrawn ever wanted to attack Earth, I hope he gets his hand on some like some Picassos. <laughs> go, these people the are straight fuck? up crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stay away from this planet. There's something infecting their brains down there. We don't want to catch it. <laughs> or just like there's that famous painting of the Campbell soup can. Oh, they, just they like, love soup. Lots of soup. <laughs> uh, Great Admiral, I don't know how we can use that to our advantage. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. So we get our introduction to him and how how cool and calm and collected he is, but he's also extremely ta- tactical and uh, he's got cunningness, uh, I guess is a way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he understands. Well, this is the way that they've been trained. So if I attack this way, then they're going to react this way. So yeah, yeah. He was talking about a specific maneuver that they were going to do, and cause them to do another maneuver because that's the only way they know how to combat that maneuver. But it still doesn't work, and that kind right. of thing. But after that, we 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 get uh, introduced to the you know cast of characters we all know and love from the original movies. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't crazy about the artwork for them. It was fine. Um. Well, it, it was, reminded it, me that the Star Wars, the original, sorry to interrupt, the, the original Star Wars run that came from uh, issue one through, it was at 120 whatever. Yeah. Back from 1977 to through to like 86, 87. Uh-huh. Um, the cover artwork was usually spot on, but the interior artwork was a lot like what we just read now. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. This is how they drove them back then. <laughs> mm. And this is a different company than Marvel, I understand. But, yeah, I just remember that it was a Star Wars book that really emphasized to me how much different the cover art was from the interior art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could I could definitely tell, like, it was from the 90s. Mm, it, there yeah. was just something about it. Um, but uh, uh, I'm trying to think. So, so Luke is there, and he's, like, having sleep terrors because he's like worrying about the new government Mm -hmm. and they're having all kinds of conferences with Akbar and all of them and Leia and Leia and Han show up um and the the new government is like poor so they Han is trying to find like essentially privateers I feel like right uh smugglers that could actually haul things for them legitimately Maybe not privateers, but something similar to that. Yeah, like smugglers, because they don't have enough transports to move stuff. So Right. Um, but nobody trusts him from his old world, because well, he was a general. 
Well, not only that, but I think a lot of the smugglers are worried that maybe maybe Han is being honest, but they're not being honest to Han. And if they fair, like, oh, yeah. yeah, they're going to land. They go, hey, I'm here to take your cargo. Ah, great, a pirate has arrived. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So and it's valid. I mean, I would be worried about that too. Yeah, I mean, and that is not something that uh, is unlike what the uh, what was the the, 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 the uh, tea company back in the time of actual pirates. I know it was f- featured in the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, but that was actually a actual oh. tea company. But yeah, they w- they would set up traps to get pirates to come to certain areas. Not necessarily say we want to hire you, but th- they would set up uh, rumors of specific cargo being moved uh, by a ship, uh-huh. and it was actually a warship in disguise. And you know, they, it, they would set them up to get them. You know, so I've also heard about like. Stage coaches that were supposedly bank carrying gold and cash, but it was actually filled with troopers or something. Yep. <laughs> Similar thing, yeah. Or trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full car, you know, you open up the car, instead of it being gold, it's uh, 100 guys. and or, or like a Gatling gun or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah, what he's trying to do, I, I, this storyline did not close loop everything i mean it didn't like it started and it did not uh, at the end of episode uh, issue six to me it was it wasn't over yeah and there is the way issue seven i'd love to know where does this story continue it was almost like we just stuck our heads out through the window and saw some a stream of thing happening and then we, did, we didn't see the very beginning and we didn't get any conclusion either right uh, I don't think that this is where they're going to go with the uh, the Filoniverse, the Mandalorian, and everything else. Uh, trying to uh, kidnap Luke and Leia. And one thing that makes me wonder is if they are going to make this canon, even though it's a story by somebody else. Leia was pregnant with twins. I only know about Ben. <laughs> Who the other one? <laughs> Isn't it... Uh... Hmm. Ben Solo didn't have any siblings that I'm aware of. The Solo twins were... Mm. In the movie canon? No, maybe this is EU or something. Okay. It's hard to say. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to... No, that's okay. I mean, I, again, if you happen to know and you're watching this on YouTube, just... Drop a comment down below. Give us a, some background information on this. I would really like to know. Um, but, yeah, this is taking place five years after the Battle of Andor, which is exactly the same time that the Mandalorian TV show is supposed to be taking place. So, Oh, um, okay. That's cool, actually. I didn't know uh, that. I don't think that they're going to be bringing Leia back in nah. to the Mandalorian, you know, and, and, and Han. <laughs> Uh, Luke's already there, but are they going to de-age or recast? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, well, you could just have him <laughs> for the whole thing just be covered with the berries, berries that make him look like the thing, <laughs> so nobody well, can tell. <laughs> the thing is that you know, a lot of people are, um, you know, like, no, you can't recast. That's hot. That's Mark Hamill's role. Bottom line is, Mark Hamill says he's okay with it. Go ahead and recast. I got everybody else. Just shut up. Yeah, I don't. I don't think recasting is as uh, big of a deal as some people yell on the internet as it is. Yeah, it's because they just don't like change. Right. I and mean, I like, mean, I, I, for example, I would have been fine if they recasted T'Challa. Personally, I really didn't want to see that one recast. That's probably the only time I would have stood for not recasting. That's fair. Um, but I mean, like Luke Skywalker calling the lightsaber a flaming sword in the movie, and people lost their mind. I'm like, dude, it's Luke Skywalker. If he wants to call it a flaming Tootsie Roll, it's his right. <laughs> it's his. He can call it whatever yeah, he wants. It, who am I to argue with what to call that to Luke Skywalker? This is my chalk eraser. It's mine. I don't care. I can call it whatever I want. Theoretically, could use that to erase chalk, though. Yeah, you're right. You just pour it on the, yeah. For those of you listening on a uh, audio cast, he was just holding up a cup of fruit punch. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that's fruit punch. Getting ready for the coconut con this coming weekend. Oh, yes. I'm so looking forward to this. And if you want to join us on our Patreon, you still got time to join our Patreon. So what time is that next Saturday? 
Ooh. Uh, I think we said 8 o'clock. Eastern Standard? Eastern Standard, yeah. Yes. This For is just going to be Californians a get, out there. A get together of goofy individuals uh, on our. Well, we're probably just going to do it by Skype, I assume. Yeah, or we might fire up the old uh, StreamYard just, okay. for, just for simplicity. Cool. I like it. Uh, and we're just going to just hang around, talk, just answer have questions fun. if you have them. Yeah. Or we'll probably ask them some questions as well. Absolutely. <laughs> so if you want to join the fun, just join our Patreon and you know, you'll find the information and we'll be sending you uh, links to it. Yeah, absolutely. But back to oh, the comic book. Yeah. So this is my first, I think this is my first exposure to a quote unquote dark Jedi. Okay. Have you, had nope. you had any introduction to them at all? No. Had you heard of a dark Jedi? Yes. Okay. Um, but I don't, I still, there's no, they introduced several things in this book that I would love to know more background information on. What are these animals that block the force? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's splinties or something. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that the midichlorians in the bloodstream, thank you for add, adding that to the Star Wars universe. That just took all the mystique out. Um, <laughs> That maybe these animals that you just mentioned, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, they excrete something out of their breath that puts that puts them to sleep, kind of like smoke does to bees. I don't know. It's Isalamir. But I mean, and that's and when they first ran into the Dark Jedi, he tr he actually tried to use a force against them and it's it's not like the force didn't work it just it bent around them it was like a force field or you know something exactly it looked just like a force field so and i was i was surprised because sorry i interrupted it's okay um at this point we didn't know he was a dark jedi correct and and he went like you know he did the lightning towards him or whatever and i was like damn that's not very jedi -y. and then he's like he leads them into a temple and there's like a, a thousand candles around and he's like, these are all for people who have come and been killed by me. And I was like, dude, <laughs> you do not sound like a Jedi. <laughs> so what? Just, just arbitrarily killing somebody like Mace Windu was trying to do. Mm -hmm. anyway. <laughs> <coughs> no, he's got to be killed. It's not the Jedi way. <laughs> But anyway, the um, I still don't know what his motivation is in wanting the twins. What, um, so he can mold them himself? So he can have power over something? I, I don't get it. Well, there was even one point where he, where uh, Captain and Thrawn were talking to each other. And he was like, what do we... The Captain was like, what does he want if he doesn't want power? And, and Thrawn was like, it's nonsense. Every man wants power. Power in one way or, or one shape or, or another. Right. It might not be, you know, you want to be the governor and have the power, but you just influence in, in a way. Yeah. Even so if you I... want to strengthen your abilities with the force, it's still a power. Right. So I don't, I, I'm not sure what he, he wanted with the, with the twins. And I don't see the, uh, the in-depth hatred that Mary Jade has for Luke Skywalker, specifically for Luke Skywalker. I mean, he didn't. Rep he was not the entire rebellion. First off, okay, so you were in Jabba's palace as a dancer, but you were also reporting to Thrawn, so you had some kind of station. So she was having her power of some some sort. So you want to? You're going out of your way to make sure this one particular Jedi dies because you lost your job. <laughs> yeah, your entire life changed. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like right now the life that you're leading is a little bit more rewarding. <laughs> you're not underneath somebody's thumb and worried about uh, being caught in the middle of a war. Clearly that, she valued that that life more, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess it kind of reminds me of what's the, uh, the, the, blonde, the angry blonde from Andor. <laughs> oh. You know who I'm talking about? Um. The like quasi leader yeah, of the, the little uh, group, yeah, the uh, uh, ILS. Oh, gosh. Or what? Yeah, I can't remember the uh, Secret Service of, of the Empire. 
The one that worked in the back of the shop? Who was always pissed off? No, the 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 Empire um Oh, 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 the Empire. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, the one that worked for the Secret Service uh, that you know always yep. seemed ticked off. Yep. <laughs> they got rescued at the end <laughs> during yep. the during the riots, yeah. That's true. That's a good that's a good comp. I'm reading here um he wanted the unborn twins so that he could take them as his apprentices. Okay. So if you're dark, then you still have to follow the, the rule of two. So which one of the twins, you, I guess whichever one is the weaker of the two twins, you just dispose of. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's not. Maybe a dark Jedi is just, is it, maybe there are no rules. Maybe he, you know, used, I don't know. I, I want to see more characters like the Bendu. One's in the middle. Bendu? Rebels? I am the sure. Bendu. I am the one in the middle. <laughs> oh, is it the, the like giant tree thing? Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and he was extremely powerful. He was. So. Um So yeah, uh, you know, we at uh, at some other points we come across Lando again. Mm-hmm. Who actually I really thought this was cool. How in order in order to get to him, they had to like travel. They had to like stay shielded behind this like spacefaring shield because the planet or star was so hot, and the planet was so close. It was like on a on an orbit extremely close, kind of like Mercury would be. Yeah, that was a fun, interesting, just invention of in the Star Wars universe. I thought. But what's also really interesting is if you know planetary dynamics. When planets are that close to their um, gravitational influence, mm-hmm. like the moon is to, the United, to Earth and Mercury is to the sun, mm-hmm. they become tidally locked, which means one side always faces that you know, their point of attraction. I see, yeah. So that's why we always see, we call it the light side of the moon, but that's it's not always light. It depends on where the, the sun is, but it's the side that we always see. There, it's It rotates exactly the same speed that it revolves. Right. So if you could get to the dark side of the planet that Lando is on, you'd be able to mine there without getting your cookies cooked. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice way to put it, yeah. That helps actually I me mean, understand that a little bit better because I was a little lost there. Um, but they go to they go to Lando again, you know, when they're in a pinch, and uh, he helps out. Um, he they uh, in order to to land, I think they they were like, I want to play a game of sabak, and that that like put his antennas up. He's like, Oh, you want to play a game of sabak, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what I thought was funny was they expanded a little bit on. Uh, Han winning the Millennium Falcon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we knew that he won him from Lando, but what somebody's like, you, you let him win, you know, take the Millennium Falcon from you, and he said, I didn't think he was going to pass by the full fleet of shiny new yachts in the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after that, uh, they kind of split, right? We well, have first the Empire happened to oh, be yeah. attacking there at the same exact time, and it wasn't that they were going there specifically to get Han and Leia. They were going there to get those uh, robot miners. Yeah, mole mole miners. Yes. They don't um, look like children. Miners, not miners. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Now, anybody who's watched uh, Galaxy Quest knows the reference. So <laughs> There you go. I got to get you to watch it. You'll laugh. You you will really enjoy that film. I'm sure I will. Um, but yeah, he lost about half. Uh, Lando loses about half of his bowl miners. And yeah, I think no at one point he was the, like 43, 43, gone, or something like that. Yeah. And we have no idea what it was that Thrawn wanted him for, but he, you know it's for something. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it was something. Yeah, I guess we never actually really knew why he wanted him, huh? At that point, no. Later on, yes. Later on, when he, wanna... he uh, had a, a person in each one, and as they're raiding the uh, junkyard, I guess you'd say, the, where the impounded ships were, uh-huh. it was one mole miner per ship, 
to go in and steal basically another fleet for himself. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's how they were able to destroy them all was uh, Han said to Lando, hey, uh, do you still have the codes for these things? Yeah, can you turn them on? <laughs> and mm-hmm. they'll bore into each one of these ships. They're still connected to them. <laughs> Uh, so after they, after Thrawn steals, kidnaps the, the mole miners, uh, they, let's see here, um, Chewie and Leia go to Kashyyyk, right? Yes, which Thrawn figures through their ruse. Oh my God, ruse. that was incredible. Yeah. Uh, so, so they have this elaborate plan where they like swap passengers on ships. They program C-3PO to have Leia's voice. Right, which he was not a fan of. He was like, oh, you should, I'm not supposed to do this. And I Your think, communications I think, droid. This is exactly what we're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's ex- right. I promise we'll unprogram you when we're done. I think it so, was bugging Han more than anything else to see uh, her voice come out of him. <laughs> uh, I bet. Uh, so they, they make some swaps. They try to like sh- do some subterfuge. And um, it fools Captain Peleon. Yes. And he's talking to Thrawn about it. And Thrawn's like, no. It's exactly they're, like this. And he proceeds to tell him exactly what had docked, happened. They were docked for three minutes and 23 seconds. Just enough time to move this part, this amount of people from one to the other. They are going to Kashyyyk. Right. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude. And no contest. Again, and if, again, if you watched Rebels, that's exactly the kind of stuff that they had him do in Rebels. They were very, very yeah. true to his character. Yeah. And, you know, uh, they... They go to Kashyyyk, right? Mm-hmm. And um, there's a... <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. There's a Wookiee that speaks English. But with like extra like extra letters and yes. words. And like the way when, Kashyyyk has three Ys instead of just one. Yeah, and as soon as the, this... I, I, it was a female I took it, right? I think. Um, I mean, I didn't lift, up, lift her up and look, but uh, <laughs> it's funny because when she spoke in... English, Leia kind of like looks, you know, like you know, like cross, like what do you call it, out of the corner of her eye at Chewie. Let me guess, speech impediment. Like why couldn't yeah, you yeah, be yeah. doing this all this time? Right. And then the Wookiee says, actually, I'm the one with the speech impediment. I'm like, yeah. wow, English is a speech impediment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, and then Leia, Leia, when Leia finds out that uh, they're on their way to Kashyyyk or at Kashyyyk, she like literally breaks down and cries, and she's like, "When, when is this war going to end?" Yeah, because it doesn't, it doesn't really. I guess it technically it ended, but there's still like all these hostilities. So, well, does she? I think she. Yeah, she cries after they thwart the attack, but uh, one one of the key Wookies dies. And she's not allowed to go to the funeral, the first part of the funeral, because that's for Wookiees only. Right. And she was like, yeah, I understand. Yeah, they have the first service for family and fr- for family only, and then the second service for friends. Kind of like, you know, we do that here, so. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I saw the panel of her crying. I'm like, did she really care that much about the that particular Wookiee? And, so, and then I read the text of, like, when is this going to end? You know, we won the war, yeah. and it's still going on. That's and what it was about. He, and, she, yeah, she's got, she still has such, they really portray her still as having such a powerful character. Of, you know, even though she's she's in charge, she still wants to, she still cares. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want to have to be in on, charge. On, yeah. always, like, battle mode, I imagine. It's, it takes a lot out of you. Yeah. She wants to be able to just, look, I got kids on the way. I want to have a damn family already. <laughs> right. And if you think about uh, the, the arc of her character, the way they actually have her through the uh, the, the sequels, she never had that. <laughs> yeah. She never could really, like, kick her feet up for a minute, it seems like. Yeah, but and, even, and, you know, Ben turns to the dark side. Her husband yeah. takes off and becomes a smuggler again. She's still... Running, you know, like running a rebellion or rebels or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Resistance. Yeah. So. Poor layup. Um, but let's get into Mara Jade, huh? Oh, yes. So, 
uh, you know, one thing leads to another, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, and Luke gets uh, captured by uh, somebody card. I forget his name. Tab- Talon card. Who is a uh, prolific smuggler. And, and go ahead. head of that region, I guess you'd say, at least. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's he's kind of in the gray neutral area. Like, he's not, you know, as all smugglers or whatever, he's not with the, the New Republic. He's not, you know, with Thrawn. But he talks to both and maybe flew a little close to the sun, metaphorically, mm-hmm. uh, because he comes across Luke, who is stranded in the in space. And, you know, you could read it if you want to find out why. But... Uh, he saves him, and then he's like, "You're my prisoner now." So, uh, I forget where they t- where did they land? Where were they? Uh, like, I can't remember. The, I don't remember names. Sorry, I don't either. Anyway, his, they, his planet. <laughs> his yeah, they go to his planet. I uh, mean, he he's got a base there. He's not from that particular planet. Yeah, but, but they they imprison him there, and Mara Jade is like. Luke Skywalker's keeper the whole time. Make sure he's always in chains and in prison and stuff like that. And this is a sassy woman. She's uh, got this undying, seething hatred for Luke Skywalker this whole time. And it really comes out. And, you know, we see it here and there as the story progresses. And then yeah. w- once we're towards the end here, it really comes out. And she's just snapping at him at every possible moment. And he's just like, hey. I'm, I'm okay. You don't. What I do to you? I don't even know you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, and you got a lot of thought bubbles for her. You know, like, yeah, well, you'll find out soon enough. I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, did he accidentally? Let me guess. Her dad was a Tie Fighter pilot or something, or <laughs> what? Yeah, her, it had her, to be something her, like her, that. Her kids, and then it, her kids were on the Death Star. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. I mean, it does, so eventually, you know, she she spills the beans that you know she was uh, an an aide or something to Palpatine directly. Yep. And, and she liked her position. She had power. She had respect, and this and that, and all gone like that when the rebellion overthrew him, Invader. Yep. So, and I, and I think I don't know if if it's common knowledge that vader is the one that actually killed palpatine oh like common knowledge in the the galaxy yeah i think it's actually thought that luke went on board and by the time he came off vader and palpatine were dead luke took them both out oh man he's he's a shit (laughs) that's true and there were a couple times in the books where he was referred to as a hero not by himself but other people they were like oh they like heroes you should come yeah. Um, so, uh, eventually Luke breaks out with the help of none other than R2 of mm-hmm. his prison. Um, but then, well, actually he, he broke out, he broke out himself and then had to go back in to break R2 out. Oh, is that but right? Okay. They, they locked him in a, like a storage shed. Yeah. And she blasted the control on the inside, so this way it had no power. He couldn't open the door from the inside. Uh, R2 was locked inside his, his own like little dog kennel cage thing. <laughs> mm, so yeah. he couldn't do anything. And Luke was looking for some kind of a power source. He could talk to R2, but the only power source that he could think of was actually what controls his mechanical hand. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So he <laughs> asked R2, talk me through the procedure. I'm like, man... Imagine you have to cut your own hand open. I understand it's mechanical, but still, you got to cut your own hand open, and you are going to have to take detailed instructions from beep, beep, boop, boop. You better make sure you understand that flawlessly. <laughs> and that your knife's really clean. You don't want any bacteria. Also, it reminded me of that scene in Terminator 2 where they go to like the uh, chip manufa- the guy who yep. created the chip show house, him. and they're like, show him. And he goes like this, and he goes, Tsh! and he shows his, his arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh so but yeah eventually you know they they get out and they're speeding they, he steals a speeder kind of thing goes speeding off into the forest yeah and uh mara jade is like fuck that and uh 
she gets one and goes after him, right? Yep. Hey, he doesn't seem to be a very good pilot in this in this issue, though. I mean, he clips a couple of trees when he's not paying attention to where he's going. Then he well, says, "I'm gonna I'm gonna try this one maneuver." Yeah. His hands fucked up. Well, is it still? I don't know. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in Maverick, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Tom Cruise flew with his left hand. I was uh, saw that in the video today, which is pr- practically impossible the way that plane is designed. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> back um, to reality here. Yeah, exactly. Yes, Star Wars reality. <laughs> so they uh, crash. Uh, what, what, let's see what happened. They get they get uh, ambushed by um, Thrawn. Thrawn lands there and he's like uh, talks to Talon Card. And is like, oh, uh, what was that commotion west of here? Because he saw like the explosion or whatever. Yeah, I disgruntled employee, no problem. <laughs> and he was like, oh, uh, and he he commands a unit of his people, stormtroopers, to go investigate. And Talon's like, oh, no, I mean, I got my people, I'll go. And he's like, oh, nonsense, I'll do it. It's the least <laughs> I can do for you, <laughs> right? When really it's like he wants to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, if I were was card, um, I would have tried to say, you know. Grand Admiral, can I speak to you for a second? You know, commander to commander type of thing. Yeah. Uh, I have a disgruntled, I have a problem with my employees. I would like to maintain a modicum of respect amongst my employees. If it seems like I have a problem and I need you to come and clean it up for me, where does that leave me when you're not here? Allow me the ability to control my own house. No, I, I, me personally, I would have said that. Yes, I understand that's not the way it was written, but I think that would have been a valid enough argument that Thrawn could have respected it. Yeah, he seemed uh, like he would be considerate, but considerate of those things because there was a one point, and I know I'm jumping around here, uh, where um, I think it was Captain Pelion uh, made a suggestion. Hmm. Uh, when when uh, Thrawn and uh, the Dark Jedi were discussing plans. Right. And Phaleon said, forgive me for speaking out of turn. Right. Afterward, he went up and he was like, hey, I- I'm sorry. I didn't mean to speak out of turn. And he was like, "And uh, oh, what did he say? It was really cool. It was basically a dig at Vader. <laughs> yeah. He was like, uh, listen, I'm not Lord Vader. Um, I, my ego doesn't ride on this. So, you know. Yeah. And he made like, a mention about that in Rebels as well. That I'm Did not he? here for glory. You know, the only thing that concerns me is victory for my emperor. Yeah. So that was, somehow that makes him more like, oh, damn, me react like that, you know? Yeah. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, like he that's would a, come in the yeah. room and you would get a chill. <laughs> right. Yeah. So really cool. Really cool. I mean, I, I got a sense for how cold this guy was when, who's who's in charge of the tractor beam? Uh, I am, sir. But oh, my God. I've Can we talk tra- about this? Yeah. I've never been trained on something like that before. Uh, who is this man's commander? <laughs> uh, uh, I am, sir, but you know, these are just the conscripts that they send me. Ah, okay. Shumps, behead, beheads the guy. <laughs> and, oh, I have to look up the line on that. I'm sorry. Uh, he was like, then you rectify the problem problem rectified now continue on or something like that yeah it was oh here we go uh i see rook and he calls like his his bodyguard or whatever anyone can make an error and sign but that error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it slice slices off the the like the tractor beam controller's head yeah rook does the error has now been corrected. Dispose of it. Carry on. <laughs> it's like, okay, Damn. so there's a difference between a, mis- uh, you know, a mistake and an error. <laughs> so, okay, you made an error. Now you fix it. If you're not going to fix it, it's a mistake. We get rid of yes. mistakes. <laughs> so you knew that the guy was not trainable. Get somebody who will be. <laughs> that um, That's like the second or third decapitation in this series, by the way. <laughs> like early on when they were when Luke was in the market with Leia and, and uh, Han, yep. and they were getting uh, you know surrounded by these foot soldiers. Yep, there were several times where Luke like threw his lightsaber and like literally was slicing people in half with blood spewing out. Yeah, and I was kind of picturing like, 
what was the name of the uh, weapon? There's so many uh, different scenes in movies where somebody throws something and it goes around in a giant boomerang loop and kills yes. everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that happened a couple times. And there was one where specifically you saw the head come off after the laser went through it. And I was like, damn. All right. So this is more more adult. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a lot of people uh, in videos talking about these books, not necessarily since uh, the trailer, just in general. I've got, I went back and watched a lot of reaction videos to the, the books themselves. Oh, okay. And one person was actually saying that in, in her family, they drove three hours for the release of these books when they were first printed. So it was like it was known they were coming out. Oh, and then they only bought one copy, and the family was always fighting over it. Actually, no, this was when the oh, that's right. This was the making of Rebels season where they brought in Grand Admiral Thrawn. It was like an hour long video that I watched this. And the woman that, the, when she was a kid that got these books, she was the one that was on the staff that was told to draw Thrawn. Ah, uh-huh. uh, yeah, Filoni said that they in they interviewed 150 different voice actors audition 100 different 150 different voice actors until they found the right person wow <laughs> wow and, yeah That's and Lars Mickelson came in and his natural voice is not what he put to to the microphone but he made it so soft and reserved that it kind of like gave everybody a chill and went, oh shit uh, y- yeah that's him okay that's it that's it oh man I'm scared <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I like, think like we talked about before, Luke, uh, Luke and Mara Jade are now, you know, in pursuit, or being pursued by the stormtroopers that Thrawn sent, and uh, he, what's his name, uh, Card, sends them a message to warn them that they're coming. Mm-hmm. So they are like, well, the message says you guys should switch. And, you know, switch your roles or whatever. Yeah, because they're looking for a woman bringing back uh, an escaped male. Bring, have a male bringing back an escaped woman. Right. And they're like, and Mar, they do it. And then Mar Jade's like, we got to do something about your face. I can't, I can't <laughs> do that. So she goes and grabs like these poison berry branches. and Yeah, like poison oak or poison ivy from hell. <laughs> right and rubs it all over his arm and like half of his face and he he literally looks like a thing he literally looks like i did back in february well <laughs> yeah when i had that reaction to the uh antibiotics right uh and uh you know they they try to talk their way out of it and they don't really i mean they kind of believe him Pelion does but he ends up taking everybody as prisoner yeah now now <sighs> It was it was kind of funny though when I saw Han come walking up alongside of Luke again, like oh here we are again. Yep, yeah, this is so. <laughs> yeah, I've been here before. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what's our rating of this particular book? Yeah. Um, if you would have <laughs> asked me, we both shifted at the same time. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's get situated. <laughs> uh, I'm. This this doesn't. I'm gonna give it a seven. Okay. Uh, it was it was a little bit of a task to read. There was a lot of text. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot. There's a lot for me. Um, and I there were times where I started getting lost when I they started throwing around names. Mm-hmm. Um, and like random planets, and I was just a little overwhelmed. So that knocks it down, but. Uh, basically witnessing the emergence or the the birth of Thrawn uh, keeps it up for me. And uh, him being the way he is and the way he interacts is really cool. So I thought it was uh, interesting when they were running into the species that was trying to hunt down Leia, where they were like, what the heck species is this? I'm like, oh, so you're just as confused as we are. Good. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, they were like, it's not in the Senate database. Yeah, we're going to have to go research this one and find out who they are. Uh, and being called Lady Vader. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, but honestly, the way people talk about this series, I thought it was going to be more. Me too. I was a bit disappointed. 
But, I mean, it was very good. Don't get me wrong. I did not like how the story arc did not end with the uh, the sixth uh, issue. Mm. Um, it was like watch. It's like watching one episode. All six books would have been like one episode of a TV show, knowing that next week he get another TV show. And I have no idea. Did Zon write anything else? Was there a continuation to this story? Where do we go to get more information? I never heard anybody ever talk about it. So. In lieu of not seeing that, now I have more of appreciation of what's coming up in the Filoni-verse. But the books themselves, I don't... Uh, I'm right around a 6.5 to a 7 myself. Yeah. It's another one of those books that I don't know if it merits a 7, but a 6.5 just sounds a little too low. So it's right in that... Um, I don't regret reading it. <laughs> I'm glad no. I did. Um, but... I just thought it was going to be a little bit more gripping. So I'm seeing there is something called the Thrawn Trilogy. Okay, I think that's what we just read. Well, it consists of Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. Uh Aha, so what you're thinking is that the first novel is what was put into these six issues... Yes. Uh, let's see so here. So we have two more books to read. <laughs> well, I do anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to say that you have to. Yeah, Dark Force Rising was six issues. Oh, so they, they, they did comic book them as well. At least for that one. And I'm going to check here. Uh, and what was it? The Last Command. So I wonder why Heir to the Empire gets all the love. It's the first introduction. Thrawn. Yeah. Yeah, and there's six issues of uh, The Last right. Command. So I've got 12 more books to read at some point. But that's not what is on our agenda. That's not what my assigned homework is. No, but we are going to stay in space, as it were. So what's my assignment? What If, my, if I choose to accept this assignment before the tape self-destructs, what is it? <laughs> we are going to tackle... Nova from the, the Marvel's Marvel uh, Galaxy Corner. I could have yeah. said that better. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. The 1976 <laughs> run. Yes. Uh, we're going to. So <clears throat> the entire first run is only 25 issues. So we're going to do the first. There's th- really three arcs in those first 25 issues. Mm-hmm. So we c- we're going to do the first volume, which is. Nova 1 through 12, and if we decide to, to sprinkle in a little Spider-Man there, 171, because it's supplementary to, the, to that arc. So I, The only thing I don't know is there, is there a specific point where we should read 171. Like, well, you read 171 between issues 3 and 4, you know. We'll have to figure that out. Yeah. We could do it, though. We're smart cookies enough. Yes, and they they weren't overly cooked on Lando's planet, so <laughs> exactly. I was thinking about that after I said cookies. <laughs> yes, this is the cookie episode. Next week will be yes. the coconut convention. Which it's it's oh. just food. That's what we do. Yes. <laughs> oh um, man. Okay. Twelve issues, one week. Well, we've done it before. Got to make sure we do it again. Now, who who wrote this arc? Wolfman, Marv Wolfman. Oh, cool. Yeah. So should be good. One of the classics. Looking forward to it. So th- this was actually one of uh, the suggested arcs, so t- one of the suggest- suggested books on our Patreon, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Patreon.com slash Team Ohana, where you can go and join us for just three bucks a month to uh, get access to uh, us directly yeah. <laughs> in, a, in many ways. Uh, uh, you get access to polls. You can suggest what uh, you want us to read in a more direct way to us you can always make suggestions on youtube or instagram or wherever um but you can only vote on what they are on patreon you also get access to our watch alongs where we because we watch a lot of videos and you know we record our reactions and you can sit we have a time code and you can watch with us essentially and uh that's that's always fun um we're having we've mentioned a couple times now our uh get together on april 22nd at 8 p.m eastern where we're just gonna hang out we're gonna have like a uh, a, a virtual coconut meet, con meet and greet meet and greet yeah 
Uh, we're going to meet all of Team Ohana, you know, the the patrons of Team Ohana. And um, we would gladly do this in person, but we actually have Patreon members in other countries. So, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, we're going to be live from Georgia. On t- on t- Live April t- from Georgia <laughs> on April twenty. <laughs> uh What else do we get? Uh, you get the podcast a day day early, and yeah, plenty of other stuff over there. So bloopers, <laughs> check it out for three bucks a month. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Yeah, bloopers, so. uh, inappropriate things. A lot more happens than you know about. <laughs> <laughs> All Anything right, else? guys. Oh, that's it, sir. Let's wrap this up. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Helps us out. Leave some comments. You know, keep it keep it comics. Keep it, uh, you know, good. Yeah, keep it clean. Keep it comics. There you go. Uh, <laughs> don't forget to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Team Ohana. Check out our Instagram at uh, Team Ohana Family. And um, you started us on TikTok, too, but I'm still not doing those dances. Yeah, we're on TikTok. Yeah. Let me get in there. Uh, yeah. yeah. But until the, until the next episode, mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>